Hi guys, welcome to Drama. I want to try to do something a little bit different today. We've been spending a lot of time these last weeks working on pantomime, nonverbal communication. Today, I thought it might be fun to start out with a tongue twister, like we have been. I think those are really good practice for all of us. Good for our concentration and good for our diction and our enunciation. And then after that, I'm going to tell you a story using my flannel board. It's a story that I think that you will really like. It is um, a folk tale from Ethiopia, which is in Africa. So I'm going to show you a map in a minute so that you can see where Ethiopia is. But to start today, let's get our mouths ready to warm up. Remember that we talked about getting a marshmallow and putting it in our mouth and then patting our stomach and saying, <sighs> grab the marshmallow. <clears throat> you can also do this <clears throat> like we do in choir. I think my mouth is ready. Okay, so our tongue twister today is going to start with red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Can you do it three times fast? Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Good. Um, one more. This is an oldie but a goodie. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. All right, let's do it three times. Let's do it kind of medium so it's not super fast. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. Woo, the last one was hard. Okay, so in just a minute, I'm gonna start the story and it's called The Distant Fire. And it is a folk tale. Remember that folk tales are passed down through history. One generation tells it to the next generation. They tell it to their kids and they tell it to their kids. Um, and like I said, this comes from Ethiopia, which is in Africa, a really long way away. So I hope you enjoy having more of just a story time today and um, our tongue twisters. I'll be back with the story in just a minute. This story is called The Distant Fire. Once upon a time, there lived a poor young man who worked as a servant for a very rich man. One cold, windy winter's night, the rich man said, I wonder how cold a man could stand to be. I will make a bet with you. If you can pass the night in the middle of the cold sea, then I will give you all of my cattle and a house of your own with which you may live. Oh, that's so exciting. I can do it. Tomorrow night, I'll do it. And then I'll have my own home and my own cattle. Well, now later that night, the man began to worry because he realized how cold the water in the sea really was. So in the morning, he set off to talk to a wise man. The wise man's name was Abunawaz. He told him all about the bet. I have to go out into the water and stay there all night long, but if I do, I will get cattle and a house of my own. I know what will help you. On a distant shore of the sea in which you are to pass the night, have one of your relatives make a fire and keep it burning all night without letting it burn low. And you must look always into the flame of the fire and then you will not die, but you will live through the night. Thank you, Abuna was, thank you. So then the poor man went to the rich man and he said, I will take your bet and I will stay in the ocean tonight and you will give me all of your cattle and my own home. And the rich man said, it's a bet. So when the night came, Abuna was, not Abuna was, the poor man, walked into the water and he went down, down deep into the water until only his head was showing. Now on a distant shore, his mother had built a fire and she tended the fire all night long. 
Well, the poor man was freezing cold. He was coughing <coughs> and he was shivering. Ooh, ooh. But he never took his eyes off of the fire. His bones felt like ice and he began to feel sick, but then he would think about the warmth of the fire. And finally, after passing the cold night with his head above the water and looking at the fire, the morning came and the poor man came out of the water and he got dressed and he rushed to the home of the rich man. Now the rich man was amazed to see him. And the poor man said, now, Give me my cattle. I've been in the midst of the sea all night until morning. Oh, ho, ho, that's amazing. How did you do it? I watched the light of a fire on the far shore, far away, and I thought of its warmth. Oh, ha, the sight of the fire warmed you. In that case, you have lost the bet because the fire kept you safe. You did not win the house or the cattle. And then all of the people said, yes, yes, it's true. We agree so far away that the heat was too far to reach me and warm me. Hmm, why don't we take our case to the judge? So the poor man agreed and they went to see the judge. The judge listened to the story that the young man told and he said, you have lost the bet. You shall not receive anything because you have passed the night looking at the fire. That is all. Oh, the poor man sadly went back to see Abuna was, and he told him the story and what the judge said. Hmm, go on home. I have thought of a way to help you. I will invite the rich man, the judge, and the townspeople for a big feast at my house. So when the day was arrived, the, this great feast was supposed to take place, all of the guests gathered around. the house of Abuna was, but Abuna was set in his house, keeping silent. Wonderful smells of roast goat and cattle and boiled rice and delicious sauces filled the air. The servants hung up the meats above the roasting fire. The people became very hungry. Well, surely now Abuna was will come out and give us a meal, but still no food was served. All of the people complained of the hunger. Oh my gosh, what are we going to eat? I'm starving. This is ridiculous. Finally, one guest said to Abunawas, Excuse me, Abunawas, why have you done this to us? You've invited us for a feast, but you have not served any food. We are hungry. Hmm. Why are you all complaining? Are you not satisfied by all of these meats that you have smelled and that you can see hanging in front of you? Well, no, how can we be satisfied by sight and smell alone? It's not the same as eating the food. Then Abuna was said, if our friend has been warmed by a distant fire, then you have been fed by the smell and sight of the food. If you're not satisfied by the sight of the food, then why do you say that one can be warmed by a fire so far away and that can barely be seen? Oh, mm -hmm. the guests all understood what the old wise man was saying. The judge and the rich man realized their mistake and the rich man announced, all right, all right, you have won the bet. I will give you all of my cattle and one of my houses. Abuna was the wise old man, then had his servants bring in the food and everyone sat down for a delicious feast. The end. So the rich man tried to trick the poor man, right? Because the poor man figured out a way to survive. So then Abuna was had to figure out how to make the people understand that just because the man thought about the fire, it wasn't the same as having a fire. Hmm. That's a great story all the way from Ethiopia.